Welcome back to the First United Bank Center in Canyon, Texas, on the campus of West Texas A&M University, where we are moments away from the tip-off of number six ranked West Texas A&M at seven and one, hosting Southwestern Oklahoma State, who comes into today's game at one and two. The Bulldogs in their third season under the direction of former Oklahoma point guard Terry Evans. Lit up the scoreboard yesterday, Lucas Kenzie scoring 99 points in a win over Eastern New Mexico. Yeah, you know, a lot of the Buff fans watching the Bulldogs last night were saying, scratching their heads saying, wait, this team is 0-2. This was their first win because for Southwest Oklahoma State, they reigned in 15 threes. They got balanced scoring at four players in double figures. And it was an impressive performance. They, they did a nice job defensively as well against Eastern New Mexico. Now for West Texas a him. We, we said this, Ken, they won with their defense, 61-58, and it was a win that uh, for WT, for Tom Brown's team, they had to grind out against a very formidable opponent in OBU. I'm interested to see today as WT gets back out on the court, will we see that offense get back to what we're normally used to seeing, where they score in the 80s and 90s themselves. It's going to be a tough game. Let's meet the starting lineup. First for the Bulldogs, who come in at one and two. They'll start at one guard, Camden Gibson, a 5'11 junior from Oklahoma City. He had 16 points yesterday against Eastern. Second guard, Tanner Morantz. He was our Pack-a-Sack player of the game after 22 points and three rebounds yesterday against Eastern New Mexico. The third guard, Chris Brax, Jr., 6'3", junior from Oklahoma City, 19 points, four rebounds yesterday. The forwards are Mark Berry, a 6'6", sophomore from Lawton, who had 12 points, two blocks against Eastern. And rounding out starting five, D'Angelo Adkins, a 6'7", sophomore from Edmond, Oklahoma. He pulled down 11 rebounds last night. For the Buffaloes in their eighth season under head coach Tom Brown, they'll start at one guard, Jesse Oweezy, 6'5", freshman from Roanoke, Texas. Jesse averages six and a half points, 4.6 rebounds. Julius Brown's the second guard. He'll run the point. 5'10 junior from Westerville, Ohio, and a transfer from Lincoln Memorial. Julius averages 15 points, 3.3 rebounds. Third guard, he's the post-up shooter, Zach Toussaint, 5'11 sophomore from Johnsonburg, Illinois, averages 14.7 points, 2.6 rebounds. The fourth guard, Hayden Blankley, 6'6 sophomore from Sydney, Australia. He's the team's leading rebounder at 5.9. Rounding out the starting five, the Buffs' leading scorer, Larry Wise, 6'4", sophomore from Waxahachie, Texas. He averages 16.3 points, 5.6 rebounds. Yesterday, Lucas, Larry had 23 points, three rebounds, three assists, knocked down five of nine on three. The other thing that Larry Wise did, Ken, is throughout the game, Julius Brown drew the assignment of trying to stay with Burke Putnam, the talented player for OBU. Well, Burke Putnam was starting to catch fire in the second half, making a lot of shots with that reach advantage that he had over Juju. The WT coaching staff made a decision, they made a change, and they put Larry Wise, who's 6'3", well, 6'4", with his wingspan closer to 6'5". He took the assignment of, of guarding Burke Putnam and really shut him down for the most part late in the game, and that made a big difference defensively. So I've, I've been very impressed with Larry, not only offensively with all the different ways he can score, but defensively as well. He is already proving to be one of the most important players for this WT team. I think he's already making a case early in the season to be an all-LSC performer. And if you were tuned in at halftime of the Lady Buffs game when we talked to associate head coach Chris Gove, he said the issue that the Buffs coaching staff is having is figuring out more ways to get the ball in Larry Wise's hands. They've got so much talent on the floor, try and spread the wealth, but uh, you got to go with your hot hand. And the past few games, it's been Larry Wise. Here we go, a wheezy jumping center against Adkins. And it's controlled by the Bulldogs going from our right to our left. Southwestern Oklahoma State in the road. Navy blue with the white Swasu and numerals. The Buffs in the home white Under Armour with the maroon stripes on the shoulder. West Texas in the numeral in maroon across the chest. Shot clock at 10. Here's Barry. 
Very athletic guard, kicks it outside to Braggs. Braggs three, off the glass, no good. Blankley with the rebound. Good to see Hayden out there, had a little bit of an injury yesterday. Rolled or re-rolled an ankle, but told me after the game I was fine, I could have played in the second half. Here's Brown, gets a screen from Iwuzi, puts up a three, knocks it down. Good start for the box. A stop on the defensive end and then a three on the offensive end. Juju only had six yesterday against Oklahoma Baptist. Let's see how the Buffs guard Southwestern Oklahoma State, a very athletic team. Mark Berry outside. Eight on the shot clock, gets around blankly, lays it off the glass and in. Yeah, we saw Barry with some high-flying dunks last night against Eastern New Mexico. Yes. 12 points, three rebounds, and two blocks last night for Mark Barry. Here's Tucson to Juju. For three. Okay. That's a way to start it off. Southwestern Oklahoma, a very young team, and they're also missing a player who is a large component of their offensive output. Damian Thornton, he's a 6'4 junior who averaged 17 points and eight rebounds last season. Didn't slow him down yesterday. Here's a miss outside by Murat. Loose ball foul, I think it's going against Braggs. And they're going to ring up 55. Chris Braggs Jr., his first, the team's first. You know, Juju off to this hot start. You don't think maybe he's a little upset with Ohio State losing today, Kent? And maybe he, he's taking out his aggression out here on the Bulldogs. Yeah, we asked him last week, Ohio State or Cincinnati, he, from Westerville, which is just outside of Columbus. He said, baby, Buckeyes all the way. Well, he misses on that pull up from 15. He may be picturing the Bulldogs today as the Michigan Wolverines. This is Gibson. Puts up a three over Wise, knocks it down. Yeah, smooth shot yeah, there for We thought we might see a shootout. Three buckets, all threes to start the game. Tucson to Brown. Here's Blankley outside. He'll put up a three. This one no good. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Oweezy. Buff scored just 61 points yesterday against Oklahoma Baptist at one point had a 17-point lead, and then trailed one in the final minute of play. Only scored 61, but the 58 they allowed was a season low as well. Gibson tries to turn the corner. Wheezy cuts him off, so he steps back, puts up a three. No good. Rebound comes down to Atkins. He steps on the baseline. You know, Atkins does get a turnover there, but he gets the offensive rebound first. Last night in the win over Eastern New Mexico, the Bulldogs hauled in 22 offensive rebounds. They out-rebounded e 48-33. They are a very athletic and active team. Buffs break the press. Tucson, he's open. He hits it. So yesterday, Zach did not have his best shooting performance. He was 2 of 13, still scored eight points. Tom Brown was giving him a hard time saying, yeah, we were trying to get him to miss a free throw at the end of the game, and uh, he, he made that one. But Zach, we, Zach has proven this. Coming off of maybe a game where he doesn't feel like he played his best, he often plays great. And trying to drive the lane, Gibson slips down. Braggs gets the rebound, puts it up, ball loose. Bulldogs get it. Shot clock down to five. Hustle for the ball. Larry Wise gets it. Ahead to Juju for the lay-in. Man, there were some hands all over the basketball. Great hustle from Larry, and he throws it ahead to Julius Brown for that layup. 11-5 buff, 16-10 to play in the first. Barry up top to Atkins. He'll put up a three. No good. Oweezy with the rebound. Outlet to Tucson. Buffs on the move. What a game Jesse had yesterday. Nine points, eight rebounds, four steals. The freshman. Solid game. In his second starting appearance. Today he made his third. Iweezy gets the rebound, then has it taken away from Mark Berry. Ball still loose. Bulldogs get it and call timeout. timeout. Coach Evans Hold on. wanted that timeout. He got it. And we've got some jawing going on right now from the Southwestern Oklahoma State players as they were heading to their bench. They were having some words with one of the officials, and I think they just got a warning. 
So a 30-second timeout. They turn it into a full. It is. All right, Buffs lead 11-5, 1537. This one's going to be fun. Don't go anywhere. We're back with more hoops after this timeout on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. something that's already fresh even fresher by adding fresh new things like crisp pico de gallo for a little kick and creamy cilantro lime sauce for that extra whoa and pepper jack cheese because of course all on top of two fresh beef patties or with chicken on a brioche bun whataburger's limited time pico de gallo burger and new pico de gallo chicken sandwiches good thing for fresh things good thing there's whataburger West Texas A&M off to the good start here this afternoon, leading 11-5. to five. Lucas Kinsey alongside Kent Johnson, the Thunder Vision production team, bringing you this one on day two of the Pakisak Thanksgiving Classic. Director today, Jamie Abbott, doing a great job for us. Southwestern Oklahoma State basketball out of the timeout. New face on the floor for the Bulldogs, Phil Baker, 6'5 junior from Newtown, North Dakota. What a shot that was for Kylan Butler. He shot it over everybody, including Dalen Williams. Juju for three, a little short, hustles for the rebound. It's out of bounds, last touch by Brown. You know, Dalen Williams, Kent yesterday, the hero of the game for the Buffaloes with the offensive rebound and put back to give the Buffs the lead and the defensive stop with a steal. Was really impressed uh, getting a chance to go back and watch his interview with you. Very well spoken. You can tell, I mean, he speaks like he's a 30-year-old young man. Very mature. Engineering major. There's a three from the corner put up and missed by Mason Hart. And he's already got his uh, undergrad degree from Northwestern. And he was very appreciative of his opportunity to play down there, getting to play D1 ball. Now he has the opportunity to, to play a year in front of his family, who are about 45 minutes to an hour away yeah. in Stanette. There's a strong drive, kick out to Phil Baker, his three no good. In our quest for knowledge of small towns, I'll fill you in on New Home, or yes. Newtown, North Dakota. Basketball. When we get an opportunity. Basketball, geography, and history. <laughs> it's only right here with Lucas Kinsey. And Athletics and academics. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Tucson. Wants to. He will. Got it. <laughs> and Terry Evans is furious Zach at Jalen Williams. He says, Jalen, don't you know who you're guarding? You do not leave Zach Tucson that, open. That's the baby faced assassin. You can't give him that much room. <laughs> We saw that on oh, Sports Center last year. Addison Wallace almost had a steal there. Lob in the paint, Ben Smith. Tucson gets a hand on the ball. They kick it back outside. Hart drives in, blocked by Williams. Ball loose, Cameron Bell's got it. Two on one, Bell loses it, thought he was fouled. No whistle. Oh, Kent, he needed his head up because he had Addison Wallace had open. Addison, they had numbers. Here's Butler, drives in, Wallace steals it. Takes it on in. He's going to be pushed on the way, and that'll be a flagrant. It wasn't a hard foul, but no. the intention was to disrupt the shooter as he goes in. So Addison's going to get two shots, and the Buffs will get the basketball. That's a great way of describing that, Kent. It was not intentional like what I used to see the Knicks do against my Bulls uh, back in the mid-'90s. But you, you can't just simply reach out and, and hold on uh, to someone to prevent the layup. So that's why the official made the call. It wasn't like Meadowlark Lemon when the Jersey Generals go in and <laughs> no. he drops the drawer. No. Or in the case I was talking about, Xavier McDaniel coming over and, you know, taking Scotty Pippen out into the second row. Now, I, as well as many Buff fans here today. The X-Man. Saw the X-Man play yeah. at the Amarillo Civic Center against yeah. the Buffs back in the Old Valley. As a kid, I did not like him, Kent, because he played for the Knicks <laughs> against my beloved Chicago Bulls. Yeah, I remember him playing for the Supersonics. He did. Yeah, late in the career, he went over to the New York and played for Pat Riley uh, when the Knicks had those good teams. 
Addison hits one of the two. Buffs get the basketball. Brown on the wing. Kicks it outside to Bell. Bulldogs get, their, get that original starting lineup back on the floor. Austin Shelley. Williams sets a pick for Brown. Shot clock down to 12. Wallace on the wing. Drives the lane, pulls back, shot clock at five. Wallace picks up his dribble, gives it to Brown. They're going to have to hustle. Shot blocked, Whoa. out of bounds. That'll be a shot clock violation. Great defense by Southwestern Oklahoma State. You know, Addison had the ball on the perimeter with about seven, six seconds on the shot clock. He needed to drive. Uh, was not comfortable taking the outside shot there. Put it on the floor. He's got the quickness and athleticism to be able to get to the rack. Yeah, dribbles and passes need to accomplish something. You can't just go around the perimeter and, and not get any closer to the bucket. There's a lob intended to get under the bucket, but it's too far. Turnover. The Bulldogs are struggling right now offensively. You know, with Eastern New Mexico last night, they were getting whatever they wanted. Not the case today here against WT. 15-7, Buffaloes. Wallace on top to Brown. Brown the only starter on the floor right now. Gets a screen from Dalen. Goes to Cameron Bell. Shot clock at six. Bell tries to feed Williams on the baseline. I think it was tipped. Kevin McGill comes in and says it was tipped. So the Buffs will get an inbound. They're going to have to reset the shot clock. I think it's going to be about two seconds by the time they get it where it goes. They're going to give them five. Buffs will bring three players in. A Wheezy back on the floor with Larry Wise. Starters are back in. Yeah. Minus Cameron Bell and Austin Shelley. Tucson, a Wheezy, Wise, Bell, and there's Shelley. Oh, Open no. from the corner. Can't get it to go. Ball knocked away from behind by Bell, but coming up with it, Tanner Morant. Bulldogs were fortunate there. They left a wide open three for Shelley. He normally knocks those down. Here's Braggs. Kicks it outside to Morant. Morant spins, distributes to Barry. Pull up from 15. No good. Well, Barry's athletic. We know he can dunk. He does not like taking the outside shot. Oh, Larry Wise. Trying to float it in there to Oweezy for some showboat. How high do you have to throw your pass that even Jesse can't go up and get it? You know Tom Brown not happy with that one. We've got a timeout. 12 minutes to play in the first half. Buffs lead it 15-7. You're watching the Pakistan WT Thanksgiving Classic on the LSC Digital Network. Mexico, 31-7. Old Oakland Bucket's going to get another brand. This is a walk-on athlete. They train longer and put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day. With a taste of Louisiana. Walk on. We live for this. Fans having some fun here at the First United Bank Center. West Texas A&M leading 15-7 at the 12-minute mark here in the first half. Southwestern Oklahoma State struggling offensively. Kent, they're just 3 of 12 from the field, four turnovers. 1 of 5 from three-point range. The Buffs 4 of 7 from beyond the arc. Here's Braggs, drives, kicks it outside. Angelo Atkins inside, hammered from behind. That's Mark Berry going up for the shot. Good little hesitation under the basket to Hayden draw the foul. Hayden Blankley. 
draws his first personal, team's first against the Buffaloes. I think that's what Terry Evans and his coaching staff may be making an adjustment on is they're going to have to go inside out. Last night, everything was open on the perimeter. The Buffs are guarding tightly on the perimeter. So for Southwestern Oklahoma State, either through dribble penetration or getting it down inside of the post, they got to start inside first. Barry at the line misses the first. One shot. Has a second shot awaiting. Missed them both. The Wheezy with the board. They're still in a scoring drought, Kent, of nearly four minutes. Southwestern Oklahoma State is. Meanwhile, the Buffs are not doing great either. They have no field goals in nearly three minutes. Backcourt foul against D'Angelo Atkins. He was not D'Angelo going for a steal, but had a chest bump on Larry Wise. Picked up his first personal, third team foul against the Bulldogs. So Juju on the bench here. Zach Toussaint will run the point guard. Here's Blankley to Shelley. Open three. Corner got it. Jack, 40, three, three. Austin, Austin Shelley. Shelley. 18-7 WT. Little floater no good by... Gibson gets his own rebound, kicks it out to Moratz. Three, no good. Blankley gets the rebound and foul. The shot goes up, it comes off the rim, and you got to be a man to go get a rebound here today. It's an all out brawl. Mark Berry is his first, the team's fourth. Buffs basketball. You know, yesterday, Southwestern Oklahoma scored 99. They were hitting shots left and right. And they were wide open shots. You talk about wide open shots. Austin Shelley drills another one. 21 7. Well, the Buffs are living up to, to Billing. Southwest Oklahoma struggling to get going offensively. Shelley just has the body language, the poise of a shooter. He likes to play, and yes. there he reaches around Bragg and is going to get called for the foul. It's going to be Austin's first. Team second. Austin Shelley got that whistle. Not shooting foul. foul. Team foul number two. And that's obviously the area of his game that will have to continue to improve is his defense, work on his strength. But We've seen him draw charges. Yes, we have. And as an offensive player, though, he's pretty deadly. He has a slight build, you might call it, but he is not afraid to stand his ground. Corner three. Ben Smith knocks it down. Sophomore from Edmond, Oklahoma. So now the Bulldogs are two for seven from beyond the arc. No way. The 10 minute mark, <laughs> Shelley with the long one. Braggs Jr. went down. <laughs> Terry Evans questioning why there was no call on that. I'm not sure what happened with, mm. with, with Braggs Jr. He went down. Seems to be okay. Do you like the hairstyle? I on do. 55? I do, and I again can't. I love the shoes. Chris Braggs Jr., not going to lie. Maybe <laughs> maybe I'll have to order my daughter those shoes. <laughs> I don't know if that would actually work, though. With How's that going to go with the purple? Yeah, the Canyon Eagles, uh, the Lady Eagles basketball program. They might not agree with those green shoes. <laughs> and there's a charge. Push off on Ben Smith as he made some distance to get that pass. His first, the fifth against the Bulldogs. 21-10, Buffs lead, 10 to play here in the first. Brown drives to the lane off the glass. No good, but there's Blankley with the boarded bucket. Hayden, Hayden with his first bucket of the game. 23-10, Buffalo. Talk about a player that has improved his game. Yeah, that's oh, going to be an animal. Talk about board and bucket. Chris Bragg, Jr. Yeah, you saw that when Larry came all the way down and hit him pretty hard. But back to Hayden Kent, you know, he, his game has, has developed. I mean, last year, the last two seasons, really, Hayden was known just more as a shooter. And an outside shooter. He's become an inside player. Yes, a good rebounder, a good defender. He'll take charges. And uh, the shot, you know, Julius Shooting drives the paint, the misses the shot, but Hayden flies in there for the rebound and the putback. 
Braggs converts, makes it a 10-point game at 23-13. Cameron Bell returns to the lineup, replacing Hayden Blankley, so the buff's going a little smaller. Having said that, they've got Dalen Williams and Larry Wise out there. Braggs to the bench for Southwestern Oklahoma State. He's replaced by Jalen Williams. Good ball movement. Tucson open. Up. And that's when the buffs are at their best. I mean, it's not one player holding the ball on isolation. The ball. Seven threes for the buffs in the first 11 minutes. Yep, he goes from side to side. The defense loses track of even a player like Tucson, and then make them pay. It's just a 30-second timeout, so we'll stay just right here. Right here, the yeah. buffs from three-point range, 64%. One of my favorite convenience stores are 7 of 11. Yeah. <laughs> but, but in this tournament, uh, Kent, it's all about pack a sack, right? It's all about pack a sack. That's right. Nine minutes, 10 seconds left before halftime. The score, Buffaloes leading 26 to 13. So yesterday, WT's playing, and remember they had that 17-point lead over OBU uh, in the first half. They got up to a really hot start, and then they kind of lost yep. their momentum. Will they stay focused? I mean, that's what Tom sure. Brown wants to see offensively is let's keep this thing going. Welcome back. Had a 17-point lead late in the first. This game's just getting started, barely 10 minutes old. Camden Gibson goes inside to Hart, who missed the lay-in. Williams gets the board. You know, so much of the offense has been outside, but when you go inside, you'd better be ready to strap it on today. Wise loses the ball, fights for it, still loose. Brown comes up with it. Shot clock at eight. Bell for three, little strong. Brown with the rebound, put back, little too flat. Some good opportunities there for the Buffs. Here's a strong drive. Gibson blocked by Williams. Almost saves it, steps on the baseline. For the best, David Williams. You know, that's the Kimbe Matumbo finger wag worthy there. We have seen more blocked shots just in the first month of the season than we see some years. Yeah. It's good defense inside by Dalen. Close to a five second count. And they throw it away. They throw it right to Brown. Takes it from one end, hooks it over his head. No, Williams with the rebound, and he's fouled. I was wondering if Juju could was going to just toss it behind his head because he had two buff players trailing the play. I don't know that he was aware yeah. they were back there. He, he went literally behind his head trying to spin it off the glass. I've only seen David Chavlovic do that one. And Magic Johnson. <laughs> But not in person. Wearing a Buffalo uniform. <laughs> there, you, there you go. Man. Williams makes the first. I'll clarify. Madison Wallace in. That foul was on Mason Hart, his first. Now teams back, six. Back in the 80s, KJ, did, were, you, were you Celtics or Lakers? Celts. There you go. One but or the other. Larry right? Bird, Kevin McHale, Robert <laughs> Parrish, the Chief, Robert Gus Parrish. Johnson. David Williams. I'm missing one, but that's four of the five, and they were awfully good. Who can ever forget Larry Bird with the bad back laying on the baseline, waving the towel while his <laughs> teammates were on the floor playing the Lakers. And on the other side, it was showtime, right, for the Lakers. Magic Johnson. Worthy. Yeah. Michael Cooper. Laddy. Talked about him yesterday. Mm -hmm. Here's Tanner Morantz. Smith now up top, 10 on the shot clock. Guarded by Williams, goes up around Williams, can't hit glass. Shot clock to four, got to get it off quick. Jalen Williams, three, no good. Addison Wallace comes up with the rebound, buffs on the run. Now Addison slows it down. Brown from 15, the jumper, got it. Julius His two-point jump shot is really smooth, and he, he likes to take it off the bounce. Julius has 10. Here's Hart, fights in. That's got to be a walk or a jump ball or something, and it's the Buffs basketball. I, I think, is that what it is? 
they, Kevin McGill called a jump ball, okay. and it's alternating possession to the Buffaloes, and we're under eight minutes. We've got a timeout on the floor, 7.24 to play. First half, Buffs lead it, 30-13. to 13. You're watching the Pakasak WT Thanksgiving Classic. Strong defense. We'll be back in a bit. The best tailgates start with the best beef, and the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading-edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to... West Texas A&M leads this one 30 to 13 over the Southwestern Oklahoma State Bulldogs. WT shooting 48% from the field, and they are holding Suwasu to a cold, frigid 24% from the field. There's Addison Wallace into the paint. That one was halfway down and popped out. Good shot, though. Rebound comes down to Ben Smith. There's Mraz up top. He hasn't been able to get going. Can't. He was our player of the game last night. Bumped a little bit, loses the ball. Toussaint comes up with it. He's bumped and draws the foul. And I think Morass did that out of frustration. The look on his face. Yeah. Well, he was going to prevent a layup. Well, he's sending Toussaint to the line, which they won't ask him to miss this one. I may regret saying this, but it's about like giving up a layup. Makes the first. That's right. First time uh, in the game here, Kent. We're going to see Kevon Booker. He's in for Dalen Williams. For Dalen Williams. Kevon making his first appearance. 6.53 to play in the first. Zach makes some moves. Yesterday in the win, Kevon had seven rebounds. Didn't score a lot with just two points, but good defensive presence. Gibson up top, left side to Ben Smith. Back out to Gibson, shot clock approaching 10. Wise on Gibson. Slips down, so Gibson takes the three. Can't get it to go, Booker with the rebound. Here's Brown. Steps back, right side to Tucson, He's back to Brown. Julius wants the shot, instead gives it to Tucson. Zach drives the lane. Kicks it out to Bell. Toussaint with 10 to Wallace underneath. He's a little too far inside. We're going to have a foul against Chris Braggs Jr. It was close to a travel. Chris Braggs Jr., his second personal. Terry Evans, good eight feet out on the floor, having discussion with the officials, and he just got a team. He wanted that when he was working it. He did, and, you know, honestly, Kent, you look at that last call, I thought it was a travel. Uh, looked like the Buffs were kind of stuck. It was good defense because every time they were trying to get an opening, Southwestern had good help defense. But this technical really has more to do uh, with the, you know, Terry Evans' frustration on his team offensively struggling, not getting things going. Just so look at that last play. Wallace stuck there and just – yeah. Braggs Jr. said he bumped him a little bit. So Toussaint goes to the line to shoot the technicals. He'll have two, and then the Buffs will have the basketball. And it's frustrating for a team that scored 99 points last night. They're sitting at 13 with six minutes to play before halftime. The Buffs have 34 points, with six minutes to play until halftime. 
So we'll see what this does. Does it fire up southwestern Oklahoma State? Oftentimes you see, you know, coach gets a technical and it kind of fires everyone up. Or does it go the other way? 11-0 run for the Buffs over the last 3-12. Austin Shelley waiting to check in. Now we shoot the personal foul. Addison missed that one. Kickball. Austin Shelley in for Tucson. For Zach Tucson. Kylan Butler to inbound in front of the Buffs bench. What did we say earlier about Zach Tucson Kent coming off of, per, you know, subpar performances? Yeah. 13 points on three for four from the field. You rarely see, if ever, two in a row. Subpar games by Tucson. It's a strong drive, didn't net anything. It was a turnover. Kylan Butler fed it back to Addison. Oh. Wallace, who takes it coast to coast. Kent, he didn't even Addison take very many Wallace. steps, <laughs> and he went length of the floor. Coast to coast for Addison. And the Bulldogs, every time they drive in the paint, there are hands everywhere. I think that's part of what Terry Evans is yeah. questioning. Are those hands slapping in and, and making contact? Fresh five for the Bulldogs. Larry Wise back into the game. Mention Phil Baker out there, number 35, new home, North new town, North Dakota. It's a small town of 1,200. It's located on an Indian reservation. <laughs> We're going to get a foul on Shelley. If we've got the replay on this, on this one, this is this is kind of comical here. It's a big screen set up top by number 35 for Southwest yeah, Oklahoma State. Look at this. Look Phil at Baker. Shelley. He, he tries to get through. And he can't. One, excuse me, excuse me. He did that three times. <laughs> Eventually got called Hooker. for the foul. Bounces the ball away, and Addison Wallace comes up with it. Still loose. Booker gets it. Back to Addison. Buffs with possession. Five minutes to play in the first. See, Southwestern Oklahoma State, they're saying, get up, get up and guard defensively. Yeah. Get the ball back. And there we got a touch foul on Morantz. You know who's been <laughs> quiet offensively in this game is Larry Wise. Buffs leading scorer. S scoreless. Well, Two shots. other players have definitely picked up the load. Addison Wallace. Addison had, or, uh, Larry hasn't had that many touches. No, you're right. Wallace makes the first. And on the other side, Kent, for the Bulldogs, they don't have a player that scored over three points. Their leading scorer, Gibson, uh, Ben Smith, and Chris Braggs Jr. with three points each. Wise has two assists and a rebound, has not taken a shot yet. Wallace makes misses the second after making the first. 37-13. Well, for, fortunately, WT hasn't needed him to, to score a lot, and they're still leading 37-13. 24-point lead. Hart drives in, can't get the shot off. Barry picks it up and draws the foul. Now Hart couldn't get the shot off because Kavon had come over and had taken the ball away, That's but first they get a second chance Addison at it and they draw a foul. Addison Wallace, guilty of the foul. Buff six as a team. Mark Barry. Mark Barry at the line. Barry makes the first. Earlier this evening, Barry had missed a pair of free throws. One shot. Misses the second, so he's one of four. Wise on the wing. Tries to go up with a shot. They're going to call a jump ball, and this one will be Southwestern Oklahoma State. I mean, to really be fair to the officials, Kent, you drive into the paint, they're kind of letting things go for the most part. Uh, but it's not flagrant and, no, and, and rough. It's no. physical. Yeah, just trying to grab at the basketball. Yeah. 
Here's Baker with a three. It's an air ball. Outlet to Booker. Oh, <laughs> I was getting ready for the description. Yes, all, all the kids <laughs> in the gym were getting ready to go crazy too. That was about to be some showtime. That backfired. 3.57 to play in the first. We've got a timeout. Your buffs on top, 37 to 14. You're watching the Pack-a-Sack Thanksgiving Classic on the LSC Digital Network. When joints begin to fail, it's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physicians Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives. A smile is understood in any language. It represents joy, love, and shows you care. At Full Smile Dental, our mission is to build lifelong relationships one smile at a time by providing accessible, compassionate, quality care with the personal touch of friendship. Come see us at Full Smile Dental, located in Canyon, Amarillo. You think of West Texas A&M as being a very offensively minded team, but it's been the other end of the court that they've really shown today. The defense is, is uh, just tremendous right now, Kent. Uh, they've held Southwestern Oklahoma State to 21% from the field, 5 of 24. 0 for their last 7 from the field, no field goals in nearing 6 minutes. 9 turnovers forced, 13 points off turnovers. And the Buffs defense is frustrating Southwestern Oklahoma State immensely. Here's Braggs in the corner, Adkins. And it's just help every time that there's an angle opening. Inside to Braggs on the box. Triple team forces it up, no call. We'll go the other way. Shelley in the corner, kicks it outside to Wise. Reverse court to Brown. Brown picks up his dribble. Down on the block to Booker. Kavon scoreless. And there's another jump ball. You're right. You, you get inside there, you better be ready to muscle. This will be the Buffs basketball in alternating possession. Especially if the ball comes underneath your jersey. You know, if you bring that thing down, good Don't. luck. Yeah, good <laughs> luck. Go up with the ball. Blankly outside. He'll take the three. He'll pop the three. And 43 three. Five for Hayden. Eight for the Buffs as a team. Eight for 13 from the three-point line. And this is against a team that put up 99 last night and led at one point over Eastern by 33. Bragg's tied up, gets rid of it to Gibson in the corner. His three goes down. Big shot. They needed that one from Gibson. Give credit to Bragg's Jr. for getting out of trouble and giving that assist as well. He was triple team. Here's Wise for three. Larry Wise. 43-17 Buffaloes. Watch out. Oh, my. Yes, Mark Berry takes out a little bulldog frustration there. It's like you're waiting in a traffic jam, and then finally the lane opened up. Here's Blankley. He's open again. That won't go down. Hustling up court, D'Angelo Atkins to Hart. Up top, Barry drives in, wants a foul, no whistle. Tucson for the Buffs. Here's Brown from the mid range. Little short, out of bounds. It's going to be the Bulldogs basketball. Good hustle, hustle by Kavon to try to grab that rebound. It's going to go back to Southwestern Oklahoma State. They're going to call a foul. Oh, they came in and they called it on Kavon. And said there was a foul against Kavon. Wow. Okay. That's Kavon's first, the seventh team foul against the Buffs. That'll be a one and one opportunity for Southwestern Oklahoma. Abraham Agacito 
Six, seven freshman from Edmond. No, I take that back. He was walking to the line. At the line it's Mark two, Barry going, going to the line. The Barry, one of four tonight. Mark Barry. Barry's shot is good. He'll get another one. One shot. Second shot coming for Barry. He has six points, now make it seven. Cherry Evans wants full court pressure. They've got four Bulldogs in the backcourt. Juju lost it. Yeah, it was tipped, fortunately, and out okay. of bounds. Good pressure there. Got Jonas Carlisle in the lineup now for the Buffaloes. 6'2 freshman from San Antonio and Mason, Mason Hart, guilty of his second personal. Eighth Bulldog team foul. Two shots. Brown to go to the line, shooting for twice. Julius Brown, the ALMS trip to the line. Brown's first shot. Little short. He'll have a second. Got that one. Just a minute and a half left before halftime here. The buffs up 44-21. screen out there from Abe Agacito. Looks like he came from the football team out there. <laughs> Here's Mason Hart, three. Corner just beat the buzzer. Wow. Here's Carlisle, takes it up top. Tucson on the wing. Zach DeWise. Tucson, his three, rims out no good. Well, a chance for Southwestern Oklahoma State if they can score here. They can get this thing down to under 20 points. There's a three up top. No good, Jamal Smith just got the glass. Carlisle up top to Tucson. He wants to drive, takes it in. Can't get the ball to fall, but he'll draw the block. <laughs> good drive by Zach. He got a good running start on that one. Foul. Abraham He's going to go against Agacito, his first. Team's 10th, so Tucson will shoot. Twice, as will the Buffs over the final 3.7 seconds. First shot's good by Tucson. 14 in the first for Zach. Second shot, likewise. Two points, Zach Tucson. 46 24 Buffs up by 22. What a performance for Zach here. They got a good look on that one. Yeah, That's going to yeah. count. And the Buffs have set Andrew's up to prevent that. that. Kyler, Kylan Butler got loose, floated down the lane, and got the bucket. Our halftime score, West Texas A&M 46, Southwestern Oklahoma 26. We're going to take time out. When we come back, Lucas will talk Lady Buff basketball with assistant coach Will Sherman. After this timeout, you're watching the Pack-A-Sack WT Thanksgiving Classic on the LSC Digital Network.
choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. Bud Light, proudly brewed. In the heart of Texas. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Okay. Yeah. We're right here. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center. Halftime score, West Texas A&M. The number six ranked Buffaloes lead 46 to 26 over southwestern Oklahoma State. And we're being joined now at halftime by Lady Buff assistant coach Will Sherman. Coach, thanks for stopping by. You're welcome. Let me turn your mic up there. All uh, right. So the Lady, Lady Buffs get a win today, 62-51 over uh, Western Colorado. Yesterday it was the offensive explosion, right, 94 points. Today grind it out. As uh, Coach Prox said, this was one. Uh, he goes back to his uh, graduate assistant days that Kelvin Sampson would have been proud of is right. what, what right. Coach Prox said. But today was different. Today uh, take out the first quarter where we did score 26 points. This was – defense, uh, you know, go after loose balls, rebound, defend. Your thoughts on uh, the victory today over the Mountaineers? Yeah, it was a grind. I mean, once they cut it down in the second in the second quarter, yeah. it got pretty close. They didn't take the lead, though, so that was good. But, uh, yeah, grinded it out. Proud of our girls. The defense, I mean, first six minutes of the fourth quarter, they didn't score. Yeah. And we, enter, we went into the fourth quarter, and it was a three-point game. And so to have that, that's a great response. And just to know – the big momentum swing of the first quarter of every shot's falling, mm -hmm. and then it just stops falling. When you, when you look at this weekend, uh, this was uh, for the Lady Buffs two games in region, and so two two wins there. But how important was it to get these two victories uh, coming off of a three-game losing streak? The Lady Buffs obviously had played in those three losses very close. Right. But right. you come back, you come back home, uh, you get the wins, and what did, what does that do for the team in terms of the confidence? Oh, I think the confidence is growing. I think it's definitely growing. I mean, those three games without Zam and to have Zam come back were definitely huge. I think you saw on the court yesterday just that impact that Zam has at the beginning of the game of getting everything set up, kind of just getting everyone going in the game. Yeah. She does a great job of that. Uh, and so having back-to-back -back wins helps going into the New Mexico weekend next weekend and in the conference and everything like that. Yeah, we have seen uh, this uh, this weekend in particular some uh, players really stepping up their game for the Lady Buffs. Yesterday it was Taylor Williams. She scored mm -hmm. 17 points, had a great game. thought Haley Jansen's did a great job, especially in the first half today, scoring the 12 points, getting seven rebounds. So uh, does it seem like this team, Coach Sherman, from, from your perspective is – you're starting to get more production. It's starting to become more balanced, and maybe the players are figuring out their roles on this team? Yeah, I think so. I think we're still learning. Uh, there's still a lot of room to grow. I mean, this this was a game where you wanted to kind of just kill, not like just put a team away right sure. away. You know, you have a big lead going into the second quarter. You want to extend that to 20, 25, and beyond. Um, but to win those games, like winning takes a habit. you got to learn how to win, and so I think that that is definitely important. And I think each night you're going to see like some person, different person's going to step up. It's not one person on this team that sure. we need the scoring from. On defensively, like everyone is getting better and better, being on the same page, and that's just playing with each other more and more. And so to have all of our players back, I know um, Asia didn't get to play today, but Asia's now cleared, and so to have her back and in practice, and now you're able to kind of do a lot more stuff in practice where everyone's at their positions that they're going to play in the game. It just definitely helps out with the consistency and getting to the flow. 
Lady Buffs get the win uh, today, 62-51 to 51 over Western Colorado and improve the overall record on the season to four wins and five losses. And so, uh, Coach, for for you, for you, let's talk a little bit about you making a transition coming over uh, this season, joining Coach Proc's staff. Glad to have you uh, in Canyon, Texas, obviously. But tell us a little bit uh, about your, your kind of travels, where you've gone. I know you came from UT Tyler, but talk about your path here and then, the adjustment how it's been so far this season yeah I, I love it so far i mean winning is definitely more fun that's uh that's for sure that's an easy one right um yeah but i started out reno nevada as team manager for the women's basketball team so similar to coach Prox, starting yeah. out as a manager and yep. then just kind of working your way up and from there i became an assistant coach at mcmurray university in okay. abilene uh, division three out there and made the transition from d3 to d2 with ut tyler and now now about back out here i think the the texas roots have sunk in and being able to recruit Texas is pretty big, and um, just being familiar with this conference has been been really cool. I really like this conference, and I like being in Texas. And I mean, the way WT does it, I've just heard from the as an opposition of like, oh, WT, like they do things differently. Now being a part of it, it's it's very impressive, and I love to be a part of this. And you got the fan base, you got the expectations, the standards, the banners. Um, it's 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 incredible. And so for you, coaches, this is Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, your family originally is in, from and, and where is right now? I guess uh, they're in Reno, Nevada. They Reno, might Nevada. They, they might be watching in uh, at my sister's house right now. She's doing Thanksgiving. She's a nurse. And okay, so who do we need a shout out to? Then? Uh, I, oh gosh, I think I, I can't name them all. We, I know we got <laughs> Rachel, Dad, Mom, Ricky, Rogan. My my sister's pregnant, so let's get, guess yes. the name of the baby. I think it's going to be a boy. So well, let's go Roger today. Okay. I think give Roger a nice shout out would be great. And we'll start teaching all those youngsters. That's right. To, That's to do right. This I right do here. need to learn how to how to do the alma mater a little bit better. Every person I followed in the crowd has been off a little bit. And it's, then it's I just don't know. It's early in the season. We've all got things right. to improve on, right? Right, right. We'll focus on the basketball part first and then learn the alma mater, and we'll be good. All right. Thanks so much for stopping by. Coach Will Sherman for the Lady Buffs, and uh, going to continue the winning ways here for mm -hmm. West Texas A&M. The next time the Lady Buffs will be in action, will be on the road against Eastern New Mexico. Great job this weekend, Coach. Thank you so much. All we'll right, we'll ya. take a timeout, come back, have some halftime stats for you. The Buffaloes lead right now over southwestern Oklahoma State, 46-26. to 26. We're back with more basketball after these messages. It's got the looks, the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us, much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC. Jenkins Doors and Windows began serving the Texas Panhandle in 1927, and we take pride in being a part of your neighborhood. We don't use false promises or gimmicks. We simply offer quality doors and windows at a fair price, and we stand behind every sale. Jenkins is family-owned and operated, and proudly continues the traditions of quality and excellence that started over 80 years ago. Call us at 372-4336 or stop by our showroom at 820 West 6th and let our knowledgeable staff help you pick out the perfect doors and windows for your home. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center. We're at halftime, and the West Texas A&M men have the lead 46-26 over the Bulldogs of Southwestern Oklahoma State. You see there the halftime statistics at the WT Packasack Thanksgiving Classic. The Buffaloes shooting a nice percentage through the first 20 minutes, 46% from the field, including 9 out of 16 from the three-point line. That's pretty special. 11 of 15 from the free throw line for the Buffs. On the other side, Southwestern really struggling from the field. Nine out of 31 shooting, including four for 14 from the three-point line. This is the same team that last night made 15 threes, just connecting on four so far. Free throw line, four of seven for Terry Evans Bulldogs. Other stats, rebounds, very close WT out-rebounding. Southwestern Oklahoma State just by one, 21 to 20. Turnovers, nine turnovers committed by Swasu, and five turnovers for the Buffaloes. Points off the turnovers, 13 for WT, just two for Southwestern Oklahoma State. Individually, WT with two players in double figure scoring, led by Zach Toussaint, 15 points for Zach at halftime, including three of five from the field, a perfect six for six at the free throw line. 
Julius Brown, Juju with 11 points at the break. Four of 11 from the field for Brown. Buffs also getting six points off the bench from Austin Shelley. A couple of threes made for the Aussie. Hayden Blankley, a strong first half, five points, three rebounds. Larry Wise, three points, three rebounds, a couple of assists and a steal. And Addison Wallace pitching in with four points and two rebounds in six minutes, 43 seconds of play off the bench. For Southwestern Oklahoma State, nobody in double figures. Camden Gibson, the leading scorer, with eight points at the break on three of seven shooting. Mark Berry, seven points. And after that, not much scoring. Three points for Chris Braggs Jr., three points for Ben Smith, three points for Mason Hart. And so the Bulldogs right now in the locker room at halftime trying to figure out ways to get the basketball in the bucket. And so WT with the 20-point lead at halftime. We'll take another timeout. When we come back, we'll get you set for second half action from the First United Bank Center. Buffs lead by 20 at halftime, and you're watching the Packasack Thanksgiving Classic right here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. When joints begin to fail, it's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physician Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives. A smile is understood in any language. It represents joy, love, and shows you care. At Full Smile Dental, our mission is to build lifelong relationships one smile at a time by providing accessible, compassionate, quality care with the personal touch of friendship. Come see us at Full Smile Dental, located in Canyon, Amarillo, Dumas, and Dalhart, and ask us about our free Whitening for Life program. This is a walk-on athlete. They train long, put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day. For the taste of Louisiana. Walk on. We live for this. make something that's already fresh even fresher by adding fresh new things like crisp pico de gallo for a little kick and creamy cilantro lime sauce for that extra whoa and pepper jack cheese because of course all on top of two fresh beef patties or with chicken on a brioche bun whataburger's limited time pico de gallo burger and new pico de gallo chicken sandwiches good thing for fresh things good thing there's whataburger Welcome back to the First United Bank Center at the half. West Texas A&M leads Southwestern Oklahoma State 46-26, to a high-scoring affair. And we're going to have an affair of another sort next Saturday, Lucas. It's going to be Alumni Day for Buffalo Basketball Program as we will have an alumni game preceding the Buffs game against Western New Mexico. And, and Kent, I'm telling you, we'll, we'll mention some of these names. I think that we need to broadcast the alumni game. I mean, it – it's going to be pretty awesome. It would feel like an all-star game. You have names like David Chavelvik, Ryan Quaid. How about Tez Dumars? I'm telling you with Tez because I see him. He, he, he does a lot of basketball training, uh, in, in particular with my kids. 
through uh, the youth sports programs, Tez can still play. He can still shoot the ball. He can still score. Uh, Jordan Evans, it was his birthday. Jay Smoove was his birthday uh, three days ago. Put out a little video for him and told him happy birthday, and he said he can't wait to come see us. And if you're an older Buffalo fan, guys like Jerry Schaefer, Matt Madison, Brad Schreck, who was big back in the 70s, will be here. Tommy Gove, Eric Mosley. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's at noon next Saturday. Then the Buffs are going to be the first game of the doubleheader with Western New Mexico at 2 o'clock. And then the Lady Buffs and the Mustangs will play at 4 o'clock. So be on hand for Alumni Weekend next weekend. Going to be a lot of fun. Hey, if you want a short road trip Thursday night, make the hour-and-a-half drive over to Portales. The Buffs tangle with the Greyhounds. That'll be at uh, 5 o'clock Central Time. Brandon Hall, Money Mose, Tommy Gove, David Chavelvik, Jordan Evans, I'm here. I'm in. <laughs> Southwestern Oklahoma State is all in right now with the ball. Here's Braggs outside trying to drive on Wise. He's going to have to kick it out. Does to Atkins. Back inside. Turnaround no good by Mark Berry. Out of bounds. It's going to be Swasu's basketball with eight on the shot clock. And you did make me feel old. You, you said if you're older, and then you said Matt Madison. He was playing when I was in college, Kent. <laughs> That's older than a, a college kid, okay? <laughs> That's right. Here's a quick three by Gibson. No good. Rebound. Wise had it and then lost it. Chris Braggs, Jr. Backs in on Wise. Tries to find Mark Berry as the cutter. Threw the ball away. Well, that was like the five-yard curl. <laughs> and the quarterback just <laughs> zipped a it bullet. As, as hard as he could. Threw a bullet. Buffs by 20, just underway here in the second half. Brown at the elbow, kicks it outside to Wise. Buffs with their original starting five. Toussaint in the corner, feeds Blankley. 10 on the shot clock. Hayden with the turnaround. No. Oweezy tried to stuff it. Couldn't get it over the rim. Draws the foul instead. It, it's hard to describe how strong and athletic Jesse Oweezy is in his true freshman. You see him make plays like that. He, ne he nearly dunked that ball on the follow with someone fouling him. D'Angelo Atkins picks up his second personal. Jesse Oweezy at the line shooting twice. Misfires on the first. I mean, we talk about Austin Shelley. You think a year or two in the weight room, mm -hmm. what he's going to develop in. <laughs> Jesse Aweezy. <laughs> you know, Sarah Ramey and her group, their eyes had to be big as saucers when they saw the uh, canvas they get to work with. If Jesse keeps uh, getting bigger, Hunter Hughes may be talking to him, <laughs> saying, Jesse, can you, can you catch, play tight end maybe? Play tight end. Here's Moratz. Has the ball stolen by Aweezy ahead to Brown. Brown slows it down, waits for Larry Wise, who takes the three. It's no good. Hayden Blankley goes over the back. It was a gallant effort for the rebound, but he went over Mark Berry's back, picks up his second personal foul. That was a really good-looking transition. It's the shot they wanted, the buffs. Larry Wise open for the three. It just didn't go down. So far, both teams cold to start the second half. Moraz up top, guarded by Wise. Lob inside to Braggs Jr., kicks it back outside. Moraz for three, knocks it down. Well, that's Tanner Moraz's first bucket of the night. He had 22 yesterday against Eastern New Mexico. Here's Blankley, Tucson. He's open. He hits it. Back, three. All right. Back, Zach yesterday had eight points. He's got four threes and six free throws today. 18 points for Zach. Four of six from the floor, four of five from beyond the arc. Foul win against West Zach Texas A&M there. Tucson picked up the foul. That's his first, team second. Bulldogs basketball. Inbounds comes in to Barry. 
Guarded by Aweezy, tries to get around Jesse. Jesse cuts him off. Barry forces one up, no good. Look who's got the rebound, Aweezy. Can't get the outlet pass, so he starts up court and gets fouled. Chris Braggs, Jr. picks up his third personal. There's a lot of players that would have lost the ball after grabbing that rebound right there because, I mean, two players for Southwestern Oklahoma State did everything except for. Buffs have numbers here, three on two, and Wise threw it away. They were trying to poke that ball for you. Jesse just kept strong, held on. It's a Buffalo turnover. Nope, the ball was deflected. Good fortune. Brown inbounds to Aweezy, who gives it to Tucson. Tucson on the wing. Long range, no good. Mark Berry with the rebound. Gibson in the corner. Atkins, his three. It's home. Well, they start making enough of those threes. The Bulldogs can get back in this game. 49-32. At the half, it was 46-26. Here's a Wheezy. Can't come up with the drive. Rebound comes down to the Bulldogs. Tom Brown felt like that was a flop that time by Chris Braggs, Jr., Braggs Jr. for three, too strong. Wise with the rebound. Buffs have numbers, four on two. Wise spins, puts it up, and is called for the charge. Braggs Jr. took three of those charges last night against Eastern New Mexico, so he knows how to get in there and get his feet set. And this is probably one where the Buffs are a little out of control on the drive, uh, where they get the foul called against Larry Wise. Here's a look at the, the replay, Larry. And they had three on two, Kent. Yeah. But he spun right into it. Yeah, I called four on two because Hay right. Hayden was following. Here's Gibson up top. Buffs by 17. Drives oh, no. blocked by a wheezy. Ball still loose. Ball still loose. Now Braggs gets it. Nine on the shot clock. Hart for three. No good. Rebound comes down to the Bulldog Smith. His hook short. Cameron Bell gets the rebound. And we've got a touch foul. If this is on Braggs, and it is, that's his fourth. That's first foul, number four. Yeah, he came up just a little too aggressive on his closeout. It's going to take us to the media timeout. 15-32 to play, second half, and West Texas A&M leads comfortably right now, 49-32. Look at that last play. As they called the foul, they pass ahead, and Braggs Jr. comes up and got too close. We're back after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Bud Light, proudly brewed in the heart of Texas. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Score 49 to 32, West Texas A&M leads. And Kent, this has been a, a pretty slow starting second half. I mean, we're, you know, we've 15-32 to play still, and Buffs have only scored three points in this second half. A Zach Tucson three-pointer. It was 46-26 at halftime. Buffs basketball wise to Bell. Zone look here. Well, now they go back into man. Here's Wise at the line. Seven on the shot clock. He backs up. Now tries to drive. 
Kicks it outside to Tucson. We're going to have a foul with one second. Yeah, Mason Hart came in, tried to grab the basketball, got a piece of the arm. And for Hart, that's his third, the fourth team foul against the Dogs. Fresh 20 for the Buffs. Wise. Pump. Puts it off the glass and draws the foul. Foul's going to be charged to Jamal Smith, his first, team's fifth. Wise goes to the line, shooting twice. This is his first trip to the free throw line tonight. Misses the first. He had 23 last night. He's got three this evening. Second shot, knocked it down. Addison Wallace back into the lineup for the Buffaloes, replacing Zach Toussaint. Dogs basketball, Buffs leading 50-32. to 32. Gibson, guarded by Brown, goes left side to Ben Smith. Smith outside to Butler. His three is an air ball. Buffs basketball. One more game to come tonight. 7.30. It'll be Eastern New Mexico versus Oklahoma Baptist. If you like teams that wear green, that's the game for you. That's right. Bison. And Greyhounds. And the Greyhounds. Addison Wallace, little hesitation inside. Feeds Dalen Williams. Dalen pump fake. Got a little too far under the basket. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touched by Jamal Smith. Good hustle. Julius to inbound. Gets it into Williams. Up top to Wise. Shot clock at eight. Inside to Dalen. Had the ball stripped, but he was also fouled. Tanner Mraz, his first personal. Yeah, they called it on. Who did they call that on, Kent? On uh, Ben Smith. Smith. Yes, it was. First free throw good his for Dalen. You know, Southwestern Oklahoma State, one and two record right now. Could fall to one and three. And they will go back home next Thursday and Saturday. They'll take on Southeastern Oklahoma State Thursday at home. And then Saturday, they'll take on Oklahoma Baptist, the team we'll see next uh, here. They uh, start conference play, as do the Buffaloes this next week. Southeastern Oklahoma State located in Durant. And for a short time, the home of Dennis Rodman back in the day. And our good friend, Lon Reisman. Yes. Tarleton, formerly with the Lone Star Conference, they took on uh, Michigan earlier uh, oh, this they've, week. They've had a tough schedule. They've played Michigan. They've played Kansas. How about they Can played how about, Wichita State. Yeah, how about Kansas and Dayton? Falling to Dayton, yeah. Yesterday, that was an exciting finish. What was that, something like the, the A-10's first win over a top five team? As a conference, they're 1 and 119 now. Oh, wow. Not the best of possessions for WT. Not the best of halves, really, for either team so far. 51-32 our score. Buffs on top. Buffs have scored two points in the first six and a half minutes. Dalen Williams with a steal. Goes in for the lay-in. Steal and score! Some athleticism there from Dalen hanging and scooping that shot in. And Terry Evans wants a timeout. Southwestern. 13-11 to play in the second. Buffs lead at 53-32. You're watching the Pakistan WT Thanksgiving Classic on the LSC Digital Network. It's got the looks, the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. 
First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us, much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC. Jenkins Doors and Windows began serving the Texas Panhandle in 1927, and we take pride in being a part of your neighborhood. We don't use false promises or gimmicks. We simply offer quality doors and windows at a fair price, and we stand behind every sale. Jenkins is family-owned and operated, and proudly continues the traditions of quality and excellence that started over 80 years ago. Call us at 372-4336 or stop by our showroom at 820 West 6th and let our knowledgeable staff help you pick out the perfect doors and windows for your home. 13 minutes and 11 seconds left here in the second half, and West Texas A&M leads 53-32. After scoring 46 first-half points, WT only scoring seven so far, but the Bulldogs have only scored six. And we play on. Adkins right side to Gibson. Smith drives in from the block, blocked by Williams, but they're going to say that Dalen got the body as well. That's Dalen Williams' first personal. Team foul number three against the Buffs. Well, there's confusion for both teams because that was not a foul in the first half. <laughs> so just play and until somebody scores or it goes out of bounds or stolen. Ben Smith at the line. Made the first, missed the second. Williams with the rebound, and he's fouled. D'Angelo Atkins picks up his third. Team foul number seven against the Bulldogs. Can't we're shooting free throws the rest of the way. I mean, it's 12.55 <laughs> still to play. <laughs> Fellas, stop fouling. In the first half, the Buffs reached double bonus with 3.7 left. Yeah. Williams misses the first. Ball batted away. Controlled by the Dogs, Mark Berry. Kicks it back to Gibson, who brings it across the timeline. Here's Smith. Backs over Austin Shelley, and they're going to get Shelley for the block. He got the worst of that one, but unfortunately he was behind Barry as Barry started his drive. Tom Brown wants a timeout, maybe looking for a review, but he is going to take a timeout. 12.38 to play, 53-33 our score. There's a look at the play, Kent. Good position. Ooh. <laughs> May have gone the other way. And it's possible the whistle might not have blown had he not pulled Barry down with him as he went over backwards. 12-38, buffs up by 20. Buffs return to action Thursday. Over in Portales against Eastern New Mexico. It's the Lady Buffs and the Greyhounds at five. Buffs and the gray. Actually, it's going to be six and eight over there. Okay. Five and seven Central Time or Eastern Time. Now, Kent, this is the one I'm looking at. December 13th, Monday, uh, at an 11 a.m. start. Champions College. Is that like a charter school? <laughs> I don't know, Kent. <laughs> what that I mean, is? That's Community Day, and that's when. The arena will be filled with 3,500 elementary school kids. And I was a big doubter of that event two years ago when we did it the first time, and it was the most fun <laughs> basketball awesome. games I have ever seen. Yeah, to watch awesome. the interaction between the video board and the kids at the timeouts. And the kids, I thought they'd be disconnected from the game. They were into it, cheering every play. A lot of fun. On community game, that's December 13th. Yeah, I'm going to have to do some research. Between now and then, Lucas will tell us all about Champions College. <laughs> Here's Austin Shelley. Misses a three. Rebound plucked down by Ben Smith. 
Smith wanted the drive. Wallace said no. Kicks it back outside. A three by Adkins, no oh, good. Another foul. Who's this one going on? Maybe Addison. Oh, Cameron, Cameron Bell. Bell, 24. His first, sixth team foul. Mason Hart to inbound. And we've got a timeout on the floor. We'll take it with them, 11.55 to play. You're watching the Pakistan WT Thanksgiving Classic on the LSC Digital Network. Welcome back to the first United Bank Center. 11.55 still to play in this game. And it, after a pretty good pace in the first half, I, Ken, I'm running out of words to describe this second half. It's just not pretty basketball. I mean, 53-33. you got to remember our score at halftime was 46-26. to So interested to see, okay, the second half shooting percentages. 22% for the Buffs, 16% for the Bulldogs. And again, this is a Bulldog team that put up 99 yesterday. 11.45 to play, Buffs up 20 at 53-33. Here's a three, launched and hit by Camden Gibson. He has nine all on threes. Cameron Bell crosses the timeline. And the door is left open here, I mean, for the Bulldogs. There's still time. There's plenty of time for either team to do a run. Wallace passes back to Bell. His three's off the mark. It's been a long time since Cameron has knocked down one of those outside shots. He's a great defender. And there's a three. Missed by Gibson, but he leaps forward into Austin Shelley, who is called for the foul. Yeah. That's Shelley's fourth. Buffs seventh, and the Bulldogs are shooting from here on in. That was Shelley turns around and says, Coach, I'm just standing here. Didn't know what else to do, but I guess a smart offensive play made there by Camden Gibson. Who makes the first. And this is one of these stretches that we saw WT have yesterday. There's the second. Where offensively you just go in kind of a rut. Not much rhythm. Definitely no energy right now. And they're fortunate that they built such a big first half lead. Gibson makes them both. 53-39 was a 20-point lead. And the Buffs almost throw it away. Swasu's basketball. You see some full court pressure again here from Southwestern Oklahoma State. Coach Evans feels like his team still has a shot. Nope, it's Buffs basketball. And a 10 second call. How wow. many times do you see that against the Buffaloes? 
Well, right now, WT is all out of sorts. And it's a, it's a prime opportunity if you're the Bulldogs to get back in this game. And WT needs a response. They, they need someone to kind of settle things down, and especially on the offensive side, get back in rhythm. D'Angelo Adkins goes to Smith on the wing. Smith drives baseline, and we're going to have a hand check. Goodness. This game now just plodding along. That's personal foul number two call. Larry Wise. Larry Wise picks up his second. Team foul number eight against WT. Ben Smith. Ben Smith shooting twice. Actually one and one. He missed. Buffs with the rebound. Brown on the wing. Down low to Blankley, gives it back to Awuzu, who's fouled. It's going to be Mason Hart picking up his fourth. Well, sooner or later, there's going to be some players fouling out of this game. Awuzu goes to the line where he'll shoot twice. Jesse has not scored today. And he still has not how, scored. How is that? Jesse wow. Well, Kent, he's only taken one field yeah. goal. Well, it's like Larry Wise, taken two. If you tell me we would have any game yeah. where Weezy and Wise combine for three field goal attempts and don't score. So I wonder if that's a case of, of the coaches thinking they've got to tell those players be more aggressive or if it's Southwestern Oklahoma State doing something defensively. To yeah. Well, the idea was get the ball in Larry Wise's hands more often. Three missed outside, but there with the rebound. Trying for the putback, Mark Berry, and he's going to be fouled by Blankley. For Hayden, that's number three. Well, Berry's going to have to concentrate because at the free throw line, he's been 50% today, three of six. At the line, Mark Berry. Smooth shot there. For Barry, Barry knocks down the first. And slowly, they're eroding what was a sizable 26-point buff lead. It's down to 14. 13. You get this thing under 10, and it could be in trouble. Pressure in the backcourt. Tucson gets it across. Blankley in the corner. Here's Brown. Across the top, gives it to Zach. Awezi on the block. Backs in on Braggs, who has four. Awezi forces it up. No. Ball still loose. Controlled by the Bulldogs' Atkins. Outlet to Mraz. Here's Butler in the corner. Long three, won't go. Big uh, missed opportunity there for Southwestern Oklahoma State. Tucson drives, blocked, and fouled. Southwestern foul. Bulldogs one of their last 10 from the field. WT one for their last nine. <laughs> I'm telling you, these two teams are good offensively. I know, I know. We've seen it. You just get in these stretches. Tucson knocks it down. He's got one more. To put the buffs back up by 15. He does. Two points. About 20 points for Tucson. Really Zach and Juju. And that's been most of the scoring for the Buffs today. Under nine to play. 
Braggs Jr. drives, gets it in. That was a strong drive. Took some contact, finished at the rim. 13-point ball game. Here's a Wheezy in the corner to Tucson. To Blankley, puts up a three, it won't go. Rebound pulled down by the dogs. On the run, Mraz, floater, no. A Wheezy taps it, picked up by Barry, and he's fouled. Well, Barry did a, a smart move there. He knew if he went up initially after grabbing that rebound, a Wheezy would have shot, uh, blocked that shot away from him. So he pump faked, hesitated. Look at the replay here. Mraz thought he had the floater. It's too strong. The rebound controlled by Barry, and there's just the hesitation. He draws the foul. A wheezy with the foul. That's just his first. Shooting, Mark Barry. Barry can cut it to 11 if he makes them both, but he won't. Misses them both. Ball loose. Buffs come up with it. Brown. Up top. Drives. Stops. Pulls up from 12 and knocks it down. That's Juju's first points of the second half. After having 10 in the first. Inside of eight to play. Buffs up 15. Oweezy with the rebound. Run. You know, and, and there's a freshman mistake right there, just to be a little critical of Jesse. Great rebound. The outlet goes backwards. You want to get it up the floor. Timeout on the floor. 7.48 to play. Buffs up 58-43. You're watching the Packasac WT Thanksgiving Classic on the LSC Digital Network. How do you make something that's already fresh even fresher? By adding fresh new things, like crisp pico de gallo for a little kick and creamy cilantro lime sauce for that extra whoa. And pepper jack cheese because, of course, all on top of two fresh beef patties or with chicken on a brioche bun. Whataburger's limited time pico de gallo burger and new pico de gallo chicken sandwiches. Good thing for fresh things. Good thing there's Whataburger. West Texas A&M leads 58 to 43 with 7:48 to play, and out of this timeout, we'll see if the Bulldogs have a comeback in them. They've tried here in the second half to get the scoring going. Last two possessions, the Buffs have found some good stuff with Juju Brown. For the game, WT shooting 39% from the field. Bulldogs still under 30%. They're just 26% shooting on 13 of 49. Buffs basketball. Up 15. Wise. Three. Knocks it down. His second three of the game. He's got seven. Seven and a half to play. Buffs up 61 to 43. Smith working on Williams. Turns around. Got it. Yeah, good move. Dalen had pretty good defense. Just a better shot by Ben Smith, the sophomore from Edmond. 61 45. Buffs by 16. Wise. Pull up from 12, too strong. Williams thought he was pushed out of the way. Doesn't get a call. Here's Gibson to Butler. Right wing, Smith. Drives the lane, bumps into Williams. That'll be a charge. That's Dalen Williams. That's his game right there. 
Move your feet, get in position, take the contact. Great defense. That's the fourth foul drawn by Dalen Williams today. 6.25 to play, buffs up 61-45. Williams on the block. Kicks it outside to Blankley. Tucson, he was open. He drains it. He may get his career high again today. Down at the other foul. end, quickly Braggs takes it to the hole. Can't get it to fall, but he'll go for two. Yeah, Zach's got 23. Hit his career high Monday against Midwestern State when he scored 27. Blankley just drew his fourth. Two shots, Chris Braggs. Braggs makes the first. He has six. Had 19 last night against Eastern. Down the stretch, he kind of carried the load for the Bulldogs. He did. Misses the second. Wise with the rebound, his fifth. Tucson crosses the line, flips to Brown. Twelve on the shot clock. Brown drives at the block. Outside to Blankley, right wing to Wise. Wise loses the ball, regains. Two on the clock. Brown for three. Yes, he beat the buzzer. <laughs> that was perfect. Little helter-skelter ball there, and the Buffs make it work. 67-46. Here's a three outside. Missed by Williams. Rebound to Smith. Put back no good. Williams gets the rebound on his back and flicks it ahead to Brown. Brown starts to drive, kicks it back to Wise. Wise on the wing, flicks it inside to Williams on the block. Works on Braggs, turns around, and it's called for the charge. Put his shoulder down, I believe. Okay. For Dalen, that'll be his second. And the officials are going to go to the monitor on this, I think, because Williams got a shoulder in, in Bragg's mouth. They're going to see if it's an elbow. Tom Brown's standing there, too, and they're going to shoo Tom away. There he is backing him down. Was it intentional? <laughs> Was it flagrant? Get the idea they're going to watch that one a few times. Yeah, they, they may. Four forty-six to play. Buffs up 67-46. The play in question, Dalen Williams. Turnaround post move in the paint. Made contact with Chris Bragg's face. Let's look at it one and more time. And the question is, how bad? And was I, it intentional? I don't think it's intentional, but it does hit It does hit Bragg's in the face, Ken. I mean, his, yeah. his, watch his left elbow as he makes the turn right there. Yep. And whether Braggs is playing it up or not, the reality is there was contact. Yeah. It's up to the officials to determine the severity. Good job on the replays there. Zach Tucson with 23. Career high was 27 a week ago. Well, I guess it was this week, wasn't it, against Midwestern State Monday. Yeah. Man, that seems like a week ago. It seems like a week ago, Kent. At halftime, this has been a, <laughs> this has been a long second half, man. Just uh, fouls and and really at the beginning of the the first or the second half, excuse me. Both teams really struggled offensively, yeah. but I, I think that we're also kind of losing sight of in this game how tough the WT defense has been throughout the game. They've made it very hard for Southwestern Oklahoma State. Tom Brown getting an explanation right now from one of the officials. I get the idea. They're going to call a flagrant because Tom's going through the 
gesticulations of what happened on the play, and it's a flagrant one against Dalen. So Southwestern Oklahoma State will shoot two free throws and get the ball. Yep. Chris Braggs, Jr., goes to the line to shoot twice. Buff Nation disagrees. As does Tom Brown. He has his head, head on his chin, his chin on his hand, and he's shaking his head. One shot. He missed them both. Now Swasu will inbound at the other end of the floor. So really at this point, no harm, no foul, other than Dalen Williams misses out on an offensive bucket and draws a foul. You know, and Dalen was getting an explanation from the official, was watching his body language, and as you talked to him yesterday, can't probably a lot of, yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. <laughs> he's, a, he's a respectful young man. You got your elbow up, son. Yes, sir. You hit him in the mouth. Yes, sir. <laughs> Here's Gibson, feeds Agacito. now on the block, Jamal Smith. Kicks it outside to Braggs, had an open shot, dropped the ball. Ooh, that Goes was charging in with a windmill, lays it in. 67-49. Three from the corner, airballed by Cameron Bell. Gibson has the ball knocked away by Wise. Ahead to Bell. He's fouled from behind by Braggs. And let's see if they call an intentional on that because it was. Braggs tapped Bell as soon as he caught the ball and made no attempt to go for the ball. Officials go to and, the table. And Braggs Jr. just fouled out, Kent, if, if that's uh, who they call it on. Yep, that's who it's on. He's out. We're inside of four minutes. We've got a timeout. The officials are going to go to the monitor. 67-49, your score, West Texas on top. You're watching the Packersack WT Thanksgiving Classic on the LSC Digital Network. All right, so they're still looking at this review. You see the score there, 67-49, 3.56 still to play. And I think, I think they've went ahead and made a determination on whether that was an intentional foul. Chris Braggs Jr. fouled out. A good performance for that young man today, though, in, uh, in the – Game nine points, five rebounds for Braggs Jr. Thought they were going to make a determination. They're still thinking about it. Kevin McGill, Derek Dunbar, Ryan Snyder, our officiating crew tonight, they've had their hands full. Okay, so they, that's, they, they call it an intentional. So Cameron Bell will go to the line shooting twice. And then the Buffaloes will get the basketball. So if they can convert on everything, it'll be a 22-point lead when we're done. Bell knocks down the first. His first point of the game. Makes them both. Kevon Booker back in for WT. He's joined by Bell, Toussaint, Brown, and Wise. It's going to be Mraz, Mason, Adkins, 
Agacito and Jamal Smith for the Bulldogs. Here's Booker on the block. Kicks it outside. Wise with 18 puts up a three. No good. Adkins with the rebound. Mraz up top to Smith. They lob it inside to Agacito, and we've got a whistle. And this will be a hold against Kavon Booker. His second. Abraham Agacito at the line, shooting twice. First shot's no good. Second shot about here. One shot. And we've got a lane violation. Why not? We've had everything else. Yes, we have. 325 to play in this one. Buffs lead by 20. Looking like they're going to win their eighth game of the season. Good start for this team, 8-1, if that's what they get to. Booker to Tucson. Booker, turnaround, goes underneath the reverse, and he got it. Wow, that was some style points. First bucket of the night for Kavon. There's a short jumper by Agacito. Tra uh, substitutions are going to just have a quick stoppage there to get uh, the buff subs in. We'll see Torian Harris. We'll see Parker Nielsen. And also, number 20, Jonas Carlisle, the freshman out of San Antonio. Yeah, Carlisle was in earlier in the first half. Parker Nielsen drew some starting time late in the season last year. Here's Carlisle, he'll put up a three, a little strong. But there's a putback, Torian Harris goes above the rim and lays it in. 73-51, buffs up 22. That's one of the plays my son remembers the most from last season is Torian Harris as a shot is banked in. Off the glass by Moraz. Yeah, Moraz. Remember last year, Kent, Torian Harris went up and posterized someone <laughs> early in the season, and that got everybody excited. Showed he has some hop. Carlisle outside to Booker. They feed Carlisle inside for the quick lay-in. Jonas Carlisle. Jonas Carlisle. Yeah, he's got some game. With the bucket. Approaching a minute and a half. Buffs up 75-53. Next action will be Thursday night over in Portrales as they start LSC action. And there's a steal. Agacito tried to feed. Instead, Brown got it to Booker. And he's fouled as he goes in. Abraham Agacito. Agacito with his second personal. Booker goes to the line. He's a 70 percenter this year. First shot's good. He has really improved his free throw shooting. For Julius Brown. Misses the second. Agacito with the rebound. The outlet to Mraz. Mraz pulls up. He'll take the three, and you leave him open, he'll hit the three. That's what the Bulldog fans were expecting to see a lot more of. He has eight. Approaching a minute to play. Carlisle in front of the Buffs bench on top to Nielsen. Here's Booker, turnaround from 15, no, but Carlisle gets the offensive board.
Kicks it back out to Nielsen. Left side, Shelley. He'll put up the three and drain it. Nine points. Austin Shelley. Thirty-six seconds to play. They get it inside to Baker. He's got a jump ball. Buffs basketball. He didn't have it for long. Kavon came over. Good help defense and gets the ball back for WT. Shot clock is off. Southwestern Oklahoma State backs off the defense. The Buffs will dribble this one out. Yeah, this has been uh, a, a solid win here for West Texas A&M. A great first half. Second half, not so great offensively, but a good finish. And all throughout, Kent, you hold Southwestern Oklahoma State to 56 points, and I'm giving you an A on the report card for the defense. This is one that the Buffs had the big lead. It started to become a slippery slope, but unlike last night, they didn't let it get closer than nine, and they opened it up. 79-56, our final score. We're going to take a timeout. We'll come back with our post game. You're watching the Packersack WT Thanksgiving Classic on the LSC Digital Network. When joints begin to fail, it's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physicians Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives. A smile is understood in any language. It represents joy, love, and shows you care. At Full Smile Dental, our mission is to build lifelong relationships one smile at a time by providing accessible, compassionate, quality care with the personal touch of friendship. Come see us at Full Smile Dental, located in Canyon, Amarillo, Dumas, and Dalhart, and ask us about our free Whitening for Life program. This is a walk-on athlete. They train long, put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day. For the taste of Louisiana. Walk on. We live for this. make something that's already fresh even fresher by adding fresh new things like crisp pico de gallo for a little kick and creamy cilantro lime sauce for that extra whoa and pepper jack cheese because of course all on top of two fresh beef patties or with chicken on a brioche bun what a burger's limited time pico de gallo burger and new pico de gallo chicken sandwiches good thing for fresh things good thing there's what a burger Spot. 
come back when we start doing this stuff. WT student athletes drink low fat chocolate milk post workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low fat chocolate milk to your post workout routine. Buffs win it, 79-56, run their season mark to 8-1. and one. Southwestern Oklahoma falls to 1-3. and three. Here's a look at the team statistics for the game. Southwestern Oklahoma was 18-56 of 56 from the field for 32%. From three-point range, they were 8-26 of 26 for 30%. And they knocked down 12-23. of 23 free throws at 52%. The Buffs, 12 of 53, 43% from the floor. 14 of 29, 48% from three-point range. They were 19 of 30, 63% from the line. Bulldogs out-rebounded the Buffaloes, 43 to 38. But the Buffs forced 17 Bulldog turnovers, converted them into 21 points. The Buffs turned the ball over just eight times themselves. Individually, for Southwestern Oklahoma State, Mark Berry had nine points, seven rebounds, and an assist. D'Angelo Atkins had three points, six rebounds, and an assist. Camden Gibson, 14 points, two rebounds, two assists. Tanner Moraz, eight points, three rebounds. Chris Braggs, Jr., Nine points, five rebounds, one assist. Kylan Butler, two points, three rebounds. Ben Smith, six points, eight rebounds. Mason Hart, three points, one assist. And Abraham Agacito, two points, one rebound. For the Buffaloes, Jesse Awizi had one point, six rebounds. Julius Brown, 16 points, one rebound, two assists, also two steals. Zach Tucson, our pack of sack player of the game, 23 points, one rebound, one assist, one steal, and he drew five fouls. Hayden Blankley, five points, six rebounds, four assists. Larry Wise, seven points, five rebounds, three assists. Dalen Williams, five points, five rebounds, one assist. Cameron Bell, two points, two rebounds, one assist. Addison Wallace, four points, three rebounds. Austin Shelley, nine points, going three of six from the field, one rebound. Kevon Booker, three points, two rebounds. Jonas Carlisle and Torian Harris, two points each with one rebound. And Parker Nielsen played two and a half minutes. We mentioned Zach Tucson, our player of the game. How about five of eight from the field, five of seven from three-point range, eight of eight from the line, an assist, and a steal in 30 minutes and 19 seconds. Buffs win it, 79-56. We'll take another timeout, then we'll be back. You're watching the WT Packasack Thanksgiving Classic on the LSC Digital Network. Welcome to Metadrive Pharmacy, Canyon's hometown pharmacy for over 32 years. We greet you by name, and our pharmacists take the time to counsel you and answer all your questions. Our Health Mart Pharmacy specializes in serving our community with fast, friendly, professional service and the highest quality medicines and health products. We accept most insurance plans, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we offer free in-town delivery to your home or business. Come visit us for all your health care needs. This is what a new heart valve looks like. This is what a bypassed artery looks like. And this is what a repaired aortic aneurysm looks like. 
The BSA Heart and Vascular Team is here to help you live life to the fullest. From our state-of-the-art cardiac technologies to our dedicated heart specialists, our goal is to help you take the very best care of your heart so you can enjoy everything else that matters to you. BSA for life. Rude. It was not aesthetically pleasing at all. Thank Welcome you. back to the First United Bank Center. West Texas A&M just took a 79-56 win over Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Joined now by head coach of the Buffs, Tom Brown. And coach, it was like a tale of two halves. It's a full 40 minutes of basketball. Offensively, your first half you were clicking. But then in the second half, neither team really got things going offensively, but your teams did the little things to maintain the lead and take the win. Yeah, we, we definitely did. It was, uh, you know, it wasn't the best, it wasn't the prettiest basketball, if, if that's the way you want to say it. And, but we did. We grinded it out, and, and uh, I give Southwest Oklahoma State a lot of credit. They were very scrappy. They got into us a little bit, and, you know, they've got spurt ability. Yesterday they went off on Eastern New Mexico, and, I think they had a 30-point lead on them at one time. And they could get back into the game, and I think I give our guys credit. We stayed out on their shooters, and we really we forced some turnovers, forced some tough shots. We didn't always get those rebounds. Um, but it is sometimes tough when some of those shots aren't hitting much up there. And they did have a couple couple wild shots that they got some offensive boards. But they're, they're not a bad team. You know, it's it's uh, they go up and down. It's a different style uh, than OBU, who we played yesterday. OBU was very, very deliberate and slowed the game down, and, and Southwest wanted to go up and down a little bit. And So it was good to get two wins against kind of two different teams this weekend and two in-region games as well. You know, Zach Toussaint was our Pakistan player of the game, finishing with 23 points. What really shows the maturity of Zach is – he rarely has consecutive off nights. He was down scoring last night. He comes back tonight, 23 points, but he also draws five fouls against him, and those result in turnovers. Yeah, and he played a, he played a good game. He, he was, you know, getting through screens, chasing guys. It does take a lot out of you, and, you know, he did knock down some big shots. And then Julius Brown, who's going to come on air here in a minute, uh, I thought he really did a great job controlling the offense, controlling the defense. And he hit some big shots as well to get us going. I think he was two for two right away to start the game from three. And, you know, so, and it's his birthday today. So, you know, happy birthday to Julius Brown. But it was a good win, Kent. You and, this, know, and this week you go over to Portales and start LSC play. Yeah, you know, we're 0-1 on the road, so we got to try to go get that road win and see if we can get one on the road. It's always tough to to go on the road. You know, you don't get the shoot around. You, you kind of just go over and, and you've got to, you know, it's a different shooting background, and it's it's kind of a different gym over there. So and we've got a lot of guys that have not played over there yet. So it, it'll be tough for us, but I think I like our team. I like our chances. Um, we've got to be ready to go, but I, I think our guys will. I think they understand the importance of all these games. And you might have a hiccup here or there, but you want to keep building that resume. Um, 
and trying to get into the region if you're and then if you're good enough to host that regional. So we'll see what happens. Be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Congratulations on you the win it. tonight. That's right. the head coach, Tom Thanks. Brown. We're going to let him step aside. And in a moment here, we're going to be joined by Westerville, Ohio native Julius Brown. He runs the Buffs offense. Sometimes he is the Buffs offense. This will be the uh, first time this year we visited with Juju on the air. It's his birthday. We are uh, going to take a stab at maybe 21, 22, somewhere in that 22. area. 22. 22. And a yes, big sir. smile from Julius as you <laughs> took a win over a very scrappy Southwest Oklahoma team. You got the uh, offense jump started earlier with two threes to start. Yes. Uh, a point guard that has uh, high score ability. That's, yes, uh, that's a difficult package to defend. Yes, sir. Um, how do you decide – or what do you watch for that says, I'm going to shoot on this one, or I'm going to look for Larry or Zach or Kavon? Or, I mean, you've got uh, so many weapons. Yes, I would say most of the time I just try to make the right play. And as a basketball player, you try to go by instinct. And so if your instinct's telling you to go that way, then you go that way. If your man is open, you make that pass. And that's just what I try to go by, making the right play at the right time. Now tonight, 16 points, three of four from three, couple assists, two steals. What's this, a block shot? I had a block shot. They <laughs> got you with the block. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm not sure. Probably should came have from. been Dalen's if they yeah. gave it to you. <laughs> yeah. But overall, you know, Southwest Oklahoma has, has good size and they're very athletic. Yes. But that's a good matchup for us. Oh, yes, it is. It is. I felt like coming into this game, if we were able to match their energy, because we watched them uh, yesterday, and I seen they were a high-energy team, and they played very hard. And I just felt like if we were able to match their energy, we would be able to play WT ball and get away with the win. Now, you talk about playing WT ball. This is your first season with yes, the Buffaloes, sir. coming from a very established Lincoln Memorial program, yes. but now WT has established itself as well. Yes. How do you compare or contrast the style of play between Coach Schertz and Coach Brown? Because um, they both get up and down the floor. Yes, yes. Honestly, I kind of see it the same. At Lincoln, we had a, a complete team, and I feel like here we have a complete team. And I watched, I played against you guys last year, yep. and it wasn't a whole lot of team. It was kind of a lot of iso ball. But I feel like playing here and at Lincoln, you got to move it and you got to play together as a team. And so I think us sharing the ball and also defense helped us get away with the Well, I can today. tell you firsthand experience, this is a more complete team and it's not yes. just five we're going 10 11 11 yes. deep and i mentioned a lot of weapons you've got a, a, a lot of people you can pass to i mean yes. we, we it's fun to watch larry wise play oh yes yeah that's my guy that's my guy <laughs> yeah he's a very good basketball player and then as we've talked to coach brown from time to time there are nights when the shots just don't fall there are nights like tonight when larry it's not that the shots don't fall it's that Teams are concentrating on him. Yes. He doesn't get many looks. He finally yes. gets some looks and ends up with nine points, but he can do the other things that win ball games. Oh, yes. Yes, he can. He knows how to impact the uh, ball game in other ways, too. It doesn't have to just be in scoring. Now talk a little bit about the end of last night's game with Dalen Williams, the job he does on both oh, wow. ends of the floor. Yes, I love playing with Dalen because I know, I know what I'm going to get out of Dalen. He's going to go hard. He's going to try his best every time on both ends of the floor. So that was just a great play that he was able to come up with and bring us home. With Does the he win. call you sir like he calls everybody else? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, he just called me Juju or Jew. There we go. We yeah. like it. Well, Julius, great game tonight. Big win Thank for you. the Buffaloes, another region victory, and those are very important. This week, you go over to Portales to face these Eastern New Mexico Greyhounds. I imagine yes, you and the guys are going to stick around and, and watch the game. Yes, sir. I, I don't know. Happy birthday. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Happy birthday yes, to you. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Thank Happy you. Happy birthday, Julius Brown. Thank Happy you. birthday to you. Thank you. There I watched the film, <laughs> but I don't know if I'll stay around tonight. Sounds yes, good. Well, Julius, thanks for stopping by. We'll let oh, you no problem. go get changed, go get dinner, and happy birthday. Be Thank safe. You. We'll see you next it. week. Thank you. Well, that's the Buffs point guard, Julius Brown from Westerville, Ohio, the transfer from Lincoln Memorial 
University putting the cap on WT's 79-56 win over Southwest Oklahoma State. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in about 15 minutes with the nightcap of the Pakistan WT Thanksgiving Classic. Oklahoma Baptist taking on Eastern New Mexico. That'll be in about 15 minutes. Until then, you're watching the Pakistan WT Thanksgiving Classic on the LSC Digital Network. <laughs> 